I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello. Uh, good evening. Hi. Welcome, everyone. Hi. My name is Gary McFarland. This is the kickoff as far as beginning goes. This is the Cross Reality Crypto Club. Let's say it again. Cross Reality Crypto Club. And as it says, the uh, purpose is to advance the combined ecosystems of blockchain, cryptocurrency, VR, AR, simulators, AI, IoT, consumer games, and out-of-home entertainment. So each one of those segments has its own little world, but what we're doing is bringing them all together and what would be basically a convergence of them. And then there's going to be a need to have a relationship between them, and that's going to be, uh, that's going to be facilitated by the presence of the droid coin. We'll get to that later. I'd like to introduce to you uh, the CEO of, of Silicon Nexus, Andrew Krell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for having me out. We're at uh, Bellarmine University. Uh, they're very gracious to, to host us, but they're very interested in the uh, this new advanced technology that's at the forefront of all of these things. And that's what um, cross reality is all about. Uh, I gotta move. Uh, I don't know if there's a clicker that works. Um, looks like there is. Let's see here. We're just starting, so let's just break it all in. Yeah, we're going to. <laughs> it might not be on, is the issue. All right, I'm just gonna use the keyboard because that works every time. Oh, your arrow keys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, this is what we're going to go over tonight is who I am and what is convergence and what that has to do with the Cross Reality Crypto Club, what the Silicon Nexus project is. Um, and then we're going to go over by that this club is all about learning by doing, um, build by support, earn by participating. There's already an annual conference for this, and we're just having the first meeting. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, and we're going to go from there and actually have a first meeting, looks like. So I'm Andrew Prell of Convergence, which people kind of misunderstand sometimes that the company name is Convergence. The project we're working on is the Silicon Nexus project. That is a cross reality virtual universe with a blockchain backbone for trading virtual goods. We've got a team that had that you can trace our back our, our uh, um, history back to original Atari, original Nintendo, original Namco, original Sega. Uh, we have, according to David Bishop, reinvented the video game industry four times, and we're trying to do it again because it needs it. So we've been all around the world. That's uh, Kevin Williams. Um, giving one of his talks at um, an event somewhere in the world. Both Kevin Backus and I were on that panel. All right, so what we're building, cross reality, is what we like to call experience net. There's the internet, which is more um, kind of a research tool. You look things up on it. But you, it, we believe that you learn better by doing or experiencing things, and we're going to evolve the internet into more of an experience net, to where all devices have their proper place and their proper prestige, but interact with one another in the same space, the same game space. Um, and we're trying to evolve this into an open source organization. All right, now a lot of people, we, I talk about games a lot, and there's people out in the business community that challenge me thinking, you know, games are toys, games are for kids. You know, it's a, just the consumer game industry alone is a $120 billion revenue a year in consumer games, and that's made up 72% of virtual objects being sold directly to, to players. And then once it gets into that secondary market, the player might have bought it for a dime and it can go up to $100, $500, $1,000. Who in here knows what the most expensive virtual item ever sold in a video game from the, the game to the user, most expensive virtual item ever was? Okay. Crypto Kitty? 
You know what? <laughs> That's true. Before CryptoKitty, what was the most expensive CryptoKitty? Uh, it was six figures, I know. Might, might have been, been a million dollars. Okay, <laughs> might have been a million dollars. The most expensive <laughs> virtual item was an island, and I forget the game. Hmm. It went for six million dollars. And the, a problem in the video game industry is there's these kids that earn hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of video game objects, and they go to try to liquidate some of them for cash, and they get ripped off. So we decided that we would make this kind of broad video game operating system and take a virtual currency and put it on in the operating system layer so it can interact with all games, put that on the blockchain so you can eliminate any kind of possibility of fraud. So the experience net is a community driven ecosystem that should benefit its inhabitants. So its ecosystem, we're gonna to try to have it um, built around a token rather than a dollar bill. And the difference between an ecosystem that's on the dollar bill versus a token is massive. And that will change the, the uh, scape of, of e-commerce in years to come, people don't comprehend how powerful a token-based economy is. Let me kind of go through a example for you guys on that. Back when Microsoft was trying to break into the consumer game industry with the Xbox, PlayStation had it locked down. They had just kicked out Sega and Nintendo from the consumer game industry and just owned the, the industry by themselves, pretty much. So Kevin Backus, um, he had to go around and find all the new content to go onto this new entry into the marketplace, and he used a dollar bill to do that. Not one dollar bill, but a you know, whole briefcase full of dollar bills, basically. He went and invested in thousands of companies, thousands of projects with that dollar bill. Now, what would happen if he invested in the token, and then everybody had to use that went to try to buy those games in that Xbox had to use a token. That's kind of what, you know, so he invested and in when he had one game that took off, it was a success for it, but it really didn't affect much of the others. There was a network effect where Halo came out. That was their killer app on the Xbox. And initially 24 million people bought the Xbox to play Halo. And that had a network effect where maybe this title got you know three million and this title got two million because of Halo coming out. Okay. But it was kind of what I call a limited network effect. Now, what would happen had they used a token? Something magical would happen. Okay. There's only roughly 20 million people in cryptocurrency today. 24 million initially bought the Xbox just to play Halo. So if 24 million people flocked to one cryptocurrency, that cryptocurrency would have maybe started out at a penny and went to a dime or a dollar. If he 10 x that cryptocurrency, it 10 x it for everybody. All boats rise equally. And what that does is some games didn't have a long enough runway. They, they for whatever reason, they didn't uh, account for their money properly or, or whatever. You give a... a a good, decent game, a longer runway, and possibly, you know, they'll come out with a smash hit as well, but they might have needed another six months. Um, so when when one game takes off and he invested a million dollars into 100 games, that game could go to $10 million in every one of those games. But more importantly than that, the whole ecosystem, everybody that has that token, 10x their value as well. So... The difference there is it goes from a, you know, a fiat ecosystem. Everybody's in it for themselves because, you know, they want to gather as much of that, of those dollar bills as they can, because if you gather dollar bills, it doesn't help me any. And if she increases her dollar bills, it doesn't help me any or you. Whereas in a token-based economy, if you're on the verge of doing something that's going to 100x the tokens, people are more likely to help you out because it hunts. 100x my tokens as well. So that's the way everybody can support each other a lot better in a token-based economy than in a cash-based economy. So one of our first projects that we're coming out with is Sara. It's a Silicon Nexus augmented reality app. It's at the base of our power pyramid. 
that links everything together. And we've got deals cut with um, wanting to do a test of 2,500 family entertainment centers to drive people using game quests to their facilities, have them complete the quest there, and then engage them with that facility. Um, I'm actually going to China uh, to move this forward and also to get our token onto the secondary markets. They will be effectively turning into our market maker if this deal goes through. So can't talk too much about it. Mm -hmm. But Sarah, you know, that's a that's a wormhole. That's actually a, a VR representation of it. Says, but it, it's like Pokemon Go with a purpose. Right? And then we step up from there. We've got content already in five different interfaces to Silicon Nexus. We've got multiple pieces of content for that. They're just not glued together in the back end yet. So we're going to use Sarah to kind of, I'll call it duct tape them together on the front end and allow people to play all these different games and earn things into one account while we're building the back end to where they can play against each other. That's going to take years. Sarah can be out in months. And here's some of the titles that we have out already. And they're actually, we've got them set up in the back if anybody wants to play them afterwards. This was pretty cool. This was more in the arcade, the higher end version, or higher end system. It has a motion based, uh, motion based, which kind of shakes going up and down. Um, you're like 180 feet up in the air. And then you end up in Max Flight Simulators. Oh, let me go to that one. So you can see that's a two person simulator that they're flying this craft around. When, you, when you're going up, or you're going down, or doing barrel rolls, it's pretty top end, pretty, pretty cool. But imagine all of those devices in the same game space at the same time with different roles and responsibilities. So our tokenomics is we're, we're using crowdfunding and doing the crowd sale is turning more into family entertainment centers using them as kind of a coupon with their players to get the churn going in our ecosystem. And the majority of all of our tokens will be divided into either the developers earning them by creating content for the universe or the players earning them by doing things like playing the games or driving the ecosystem. And that's pretty much, you know, after after the crowd sale and crowdfund is done, this is the only way that we'll be able to earn them over time. And these are set to go for the next, you know, five to 10 years to run this ecosystem. And then we have to kind of buy back from the ecosystem to replenish these two, two pots because you never want that to run dry. You always want to keep churning the the uh, economy in any big uh, virtual economy. That came out all wrong. I thought I had that correct. <laughs> That's fun.siliconaccess.com. Um, I'm going to skip by all this for right now. And in the future, the only way to get them is to either play or develop. All right, so we get. Now to what is the Cross Reality Crypto Club? What's its purpose? Why are we here? Um, these clubs, we're gonna to try to set up and support as a total separate entity. It'll have its own governance, its own um, president and, and vice president, secretary treasurer, and be operated as kind of, I guess, a nonprofit organization separate from our organization will be two totally different entities, but we'll support it with our tokens, basically um, just like Intel might support a, a club out in at Stanford or something like that. We'll um, donate a bunch of our tokens to the club and then based on how the club actually utilizes those tokens is whether we'll donate when it needs more. See what I did from there. So in these clubs, it's people that want to learn about cross reality. You know, we're talking artificial intelligence, internet of things, AI, AI or VR, uh, AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, simulators, video games, consumer video games, out of home entertainment, all of that 
is it best to learn by just listening to somebody talk up here or is it by doing and trying? All right, so we want these people to participate in creating this cross-reality economy, this cross-reality ecosystem, you know, to learn by doing. Um, we need economists that want to participate, you know, business development, artists of all kinds, sound, you know, there's sound effects people that are needed, music scores are needed. That's one of the most important thing in a virtual environment or a video game, people don't understand that, is the music. Um, they, when every team that I've seen that's initial team being built up from scratch. They focus on the programmers or the or the uh, graphic artists, you know, the 3D modelers. That's all they need, and they totally forget about sound. But if you want to know how important sound is in anything, uh, watch a scary movie and mute it. It turns into a comment, <laughs> right? You know, it sets the really the heart and tone of it. Uh, and obviously, developers. So with that, any kind of club, any kind of organization is going to need people to create websites, to, to go out and recruit, and that kind of stuff. And we imagine that the people that are running the crypto clubs will effectively either pay people to do those things with the cryptocurrency, and if people don't want to do any work for the club, then they should pay dues. So it's kind of like either get paid or pay dues, but either way, you should pull your weight in the club. Everybody should pull their weight one way or shape or form. And that should be kind of talked about, you know, by the, the club internal. So we think, you know, you should show up meetings to build and by support, evangelize your networks, beta test all the new games coming out. So, um, this right here was a flyer that we used back in 2015 when we went to SeaGraph, uh, the Silicon Graphics, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, Special Interest Group for Graphics. Um, we went there, we set up a booth, we talked to 250 independent game developers. There's 10 million of them out there, by the way. Wow. Um, we talked to 250 over two days and asked them if they would build content for our virtual universe in exchange for virtual currency from that universe. Not talking about cryptocurrency, not talking about the ICOs phenomenon hadn't happened. Um, a lot of them didn't even know of Bitcoin at the time. They knew video game economies at scale always come up to a secondary market. It might take it two, three, four, five years until somebody makes a hit and then it'll, then it'll be worth something. But what they knew is if anybody got paid, everybody got paid. In two days, we signed up 140 uh, people to do that. They said they committed to doing it, and we didn't implement that run forward because we weren't ready yet. We had a lot of other infrastructure to do. Um, but this is kind of how we would work with that. Well, this in itself is a tax because um, China, there's a group in, in China that wanted to support us with 10,000 developers if we could manage them and market and sell their work. So that it's possible to get a huge supply of, the, of content, but how do you QA and qualify that content? Well, we need an army of people to do that, and that's what these clubs can help do. So if you all want to pass a couple of these around just to look at, uh, look at those. Um, so that's ways that you can put in effort. Um, so it's like minimum level of effort per week, or you should pay this. So that's a suggestion. <laughs> um, everybody that I've talked to about it up front when we're testing this, these theories out, we're like, I like that suggestion because, you know, I hate being in a big club that 99% of the people don't do any of the work and 2% end up working themselves to death, right? So you earn by participating. You can create virtual goods, elements of larger assemblies. You can evangelize in your networks. You can recruit members uh, and recruit new clubs because we want clubs. I'm heading um, next uh, in September, I'm heading to uh, Guangzhou, China uh, for a couple big meetings at an event. And then I'm heading from there to Seoul, Korea. And all of those were paid by the people that I'm meeting with. Um, that's how interested they are in what we're doing. Uh, but while I'm there, I'm going to try to set up clubs just like this. You know, that's kind of why we're having this is this is to work out all the kinks. It's the first one ever. So, you know, we're fumbling our way through it. Uh, talk about getting it on the ground floor but work out all the kinks and see what will fly with different places because we want this to be international uh, immediately. And we want 
you guys to reward people. We want to reward the clubs for getting more and more clubs all around the world. And that's something that, uh, you know, if you have friends at U of L, see if we can get them to set one up at U of L, UK, uh, Florida, uh, up in Canada, you know, in Indonesia, wherever you have friends that may want to be, that's interested in like-minded in this kind of stuff, in any facet of it, you know, even the economists, there's pretty much not any spot in a university that can't come under the umbrella of a very large virtual um, economy or you know, uh, virtual universe that couldn't participate. The um, even interactive theater arts, you know, live theater is more what virtual reality is about, live interactive theater, than um, making movies. People want to, you know, take it to the canned way of making movies, and it's more about interactive live theater than it is movies. So there's really not one uh, department inside of a college that can't participate in creating content for something like this. All right, so, and then earn by participating, like I said, either pay dues or get paid. <laughs> you know, support, everybody should pull their weight. And uh, that's what I have. Then we already have established an annual conference at Derby time. We had run for the unicorns this year, which was a cryptocurrency conference that was 80% cryptocurrency and 20% video games. <laughs> but it can actually turn into a global annual conference for um, the cross reality crypto clubs to, you know, everybody come together one time a year and maybe have awards and stuff like that. I want y'all to participate in that as well. Um, and in that, just to go over the structure of what we did, it was a whole week, um, week thing with Monday, we had uh, the VIP and investor dinner. Tuesday, we did bourbon with billionaires as a bourbon trail. Um, as you can see, <laughs> a really good time. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, we did the, the conference, and you can see it up on the uh, Silicon Nexus YouTube channel. There was like 28 different talks. It was really, really good quality uh, yeah. conference. And Thursday and Friday, well, Thursday or Friday rather, Friday we went to uh, that was Wednesday, Thursday. Then Friday we went to the Kentucky Oaks, and Friday night we had the Unicorn Ball which was a blast. And then Saturday, everybody went to Derby. So it was a good time. Yeah, good. <laughs> Oh, we got the DJ sound effects in the back here. Yes. He DJ, DJ the uh, unicorn ball. So this was awesome. <laughs> yes. That's, that's effort. effort. That's, that's effort. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it back over to Gary here uh, because you should probably have a real meeting. We're you know streaming out live here. You should try to have a real meeting to see who wants to participate. Um, we should get everybody to sign up. And then at the end, anybody that participates, I'll also uh, reward them with some droids just because I like giving them out. <laughs> oh, yeah, question. I'll let, open up for questions. Let me go back up slide before we go into that. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Please. Introduce ourselves and explain what our interest is. That would be awesome. Please. Uh, well, my husband's Gary. But I'm interested on my site. Gary and I came at this from two different directions. I work in finance, and I see finance being uh, so using blockchain, hopefully sooner rather than later, so that trades settle in 10 minutes instead of five days or two days. And, you know, I've talked to Andrew about how fast it takes. It takes money to go through the banking system. You know, we all, we I, I sent cryptocurrency from here to um, uh, Singapore. Um, would we'll just say a, a, a lot of this one token. Yeah. I sent it between here and Singapore. Took five minutes. It took yeah. them longer to set up the wallet, and and I talked to them over the phone. They set up the wallet, and then I transferred it. It was under five minutes. You know, done. Yeah. Try to do that in the bank. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was background in finance, I'm like, it will catch on. Maybe the last thing to catch on, but it's finally interesting. And I have this thing, I'm on mines, and I have 1.23 tokens, and I'm trying to make my wallet. And I'm trying to learn this stuff. Like, I want to learn to create, be a developer, and come up with projects. And I don't know. I, I will definitely support this droid and the games. Anybody else? Question? Uh, I don't have a question, but uh, if I wanted to introduce myself, I'm Brittany. Um, I met Andrew the other day. Uh, 
Tuesday morning and uh, got introduced to conversions and everything. And I'm just interested in learning about all of this, uh, just interested in general. No specific interest. Cool. Just, this also so we can practice any skills by developing a game. One hundred percent. The best right. learn by doing, and it's just asking questions of that. I'm Jim, and uh, Andy and I have uh, been in the VR business off and on for a really long time, and we've developed games together and uh, different businesses along these lines. And it's quite interesting now that the world is kind of come together with a, with the you know electronic uh, currency. And I think it's uh, going to fly, and uh, I want to be part of that. I'm Alex. I'm a freshman here. And I was just like, interested in like the club in general. Just freshman in Belmont. Yeah. You're interested. What 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 brings you? What's what's your interest in the club? Like investments, basically, like cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency investments in that. Yeah. Anything with video games that you like. I like fire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so married to two good worlds here. Glenn Wait. Wettinger. And uh, my main interest is cryptocurrencies and investments in general. I got into virtual reality on the whim last fall. It's it, it's interesting, and I'm willing really to dedicate maybe an hour or two a week to it. Yeah, I'd like to do more. But, and I'm like Alex, I don't play games, I'm more into it for. I just like the special effects. You could have a rainy, nasty day here in Louisville and put that sucker on, and you're suddenly flying around somewhere sunny and beautiful. Um, you went out and got one, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple actually. You need to get high speed yes. internet to go with it. I think that's my bottom. It's a popper of internet. High end computer, you're going to need high end internet. That's true. So you have, you have happy, laggy days. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, my name is uh, Quincy. I'm actually a graduate of Belmont University uh, Communication and Digital Arts Technology. And uh, Trey was, Trey just invited me. DJ Sound Effects, excuse me. DJ Sound Effects invited me, cool. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm interested in just because uh, I've heard a lot about it. I knew uh, the uh, developer who I was staying with in New York City. He had uh, some big, he was mining for Bitcoins. He was like a cool. developer there at Yahoo. And I was like, I, this might be something. If you get one coin, it's like money. So I was like, this is interesting. I, I want to know more. Awesome. <clears throat> My name is Trey Stonebrook. Um, everybody's been calling me DJ Sound Effects, but I am a, a local DJ. Um, I'm actually one of the guys who brought his VR system for you guys to test out today just to see what VR is about. Um, but I've always played video games. I mean, growing up, I started with the 64, even though I played the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, but literally uh, virtual reality is the future of gaming. And honestly, uh, with Bitcoin backing it um, and up and coming just with droids, I think it's really going to go somewhere. Um, because I, every time I put on the VR display setup, um, it blows my mind every time that I'm in a different world, kind of like what he was saying. Um, regardless of what's going on outside, you can have whatever you want on your face. So. Be a different place. Be a different place altogether. Will you, will you ever come back? I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, awesome. Um, great Gary. having everybody here. Go ahead, Gary. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm Gary McFarland. Um, I started uh, my exposure to computers was first the TRS-80 computer. Some people call it the Trash 80. And then there was the uh, then there was the Apple A and uh, the Apple's um, Apple II, Apple II C, two E. Those. And then there was also the uh, Commodore computers, and so look at those. You've got the gaming from the Atari stuff with Pong and some of that. So yes, that's from the '70s. Yes, and uh, the Asteroids and video games like that. And of course, I was also doing the regular things like the pinball, and then the Pac-Man games came along, and there's the uh, Yaga and the Space Invaders. So I've kind of always been interested in the gaming in some way. I'm really more of a chess player now, but I still think the games are stuff that are really cool. And they progress so fast; it's really a challenge just keeping up. But I, I, I find when I once I start playing something though, I totally lose track of time. Cool. Definitely got a wide interest level here, different different interests. And then I'm supposed to give a uh, talk to the uh, entrepreneurial uh, MBA school 
with classes at the end of the end of the month, and that should wow. generate a lot more interest in this. So wow, that's excellent because the transition from that is that in the business world, what's going on is the idea of engaging employees and customers in such a way that they're um, more excited about the environment that you present, with how are you, how are your companies generating its revenue. And so conceptually, they do a lot of talking about gamifying everything, which is making it like playing a game where there's 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 some exchange involved, and it kind of creates a community. And instead of just instead of just simply like a subscription arrangement, but more of having a all oh, people feel like they can contribute something and they get something back, they get little perks here and there for being involved. And so that's that's been yeah, a good. That's uh, one of my little catchphrases that I hit people with is so with, with Sarah. We don't have to gamify it. It is a game. <laughs> nice. It's already there. So. You don't have to gamify, you know, kind of force something into it. It's a game already. People like to play. Um, so let's, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the, the feed here, and then we'll just turn it over and have the first official meeting. So um, thank you all, and let me. Uh, thank you, Andrew.